The Channel Islands, a small chain just off the coast of Southern California. These rugged and windswept islands are an oasis of biodiversity, containing plants and animals found nowhere else in the world. For millennia, the Channel Islands have served as nesting grounds for birds, including the bald eagle, until it disappeared because of human predation and DDT contamination. It would take extraordinary innovation and collaboration by scientists, resource managers, and many others to bring the bald eagle back to this ancestral home. Bald eagles were a really important component of the historic and prehistoric ecosystem of the Channel Islands. We know that there was at least three dozen nesting pairs on the Channel Islands. So this was a real core part of the population in Southern California. The role of the bald eagle in the island ecosystem is they're a top predator, they're a scavenger. They're top of the food chain. They're a very good indicator of the ecosystem health and it probably provided a source of bald eagles to, to the mainland populations as well. In the middle of the 19th century, the Channel Islands were settled by ranchers who considered bald eagles a menace to their livestock and hunted them down. Collectors also took hundreds of eagle eggs as specimens. This led to a drastic decline in their population. After the 1960s, bald eagle numbers declined to nothing on the Channel Islands, and pretty much throughout the United States, bald eagles were on their way towards extinction. There was another reason for their decline. High levels of the chemical DDT was contaminating the marine ecosystem. This caused eggshell thinning, which resulted in broken eggs during incubation. And that was sort of the last nail in the coffin for nesting bald eagles out on the Channel Islands. DDT was a common pesticide used extensively after World War II. At the time, it was considered safe. Between 1946 and 1972, approximately two million tons of DDT was produced worldwide. 25% of this production was manufactured by the Montrose Chemical Corporation in Southern California. Chemical discharge from the plant entered the marine environment through the sewage system off White Point in Los Angeles, just 20 miles from Catalina Island. Today, an estimated 80 tons of DDT still lies in the sediment on the ocean floor, extending 17 square miles from the coastline. It basically was dumped into the ocean and over decades, built up this huge reservoir of contamination on the ocean floor and over time just made its way throughout the whole marine ecosystem. No one knew what the long-term effects of DDT were gonna be. The thing about DDT is the parent product, the raw DDT, isn't very stable in the environment. It actually breaks down pretty fast into a compound called DDE. And DDE is very persistent in the environment. I mean, it takes a lot for it to, for it to break down and no longer be active. By 1980, there were no bald eagles left in Southern California. But as a young graduate student, Dave Garcelon had a dream to restore bald eagles to the Channel Islands, starting with Catalina. I didn't think there would be a problem. DDT was banned in 1972. This is eight years later now. From 1980 to 1986, Dave and his team brought in 33 juvenile eagles from Northern California and the Pacific Northwest to release onto Catalina Island. It wasn't until 1987 that we actually had a pair that we saw eggs in the nest, and then we found them broken. 
We sent the eggs for some analysis, and that's when we got the bad news. The egg remains had high concentrations of DDE. And this was a pretty staggering blow. The eagles had absorbed high levels of DDE into their system from eating contaminated fish and seabirds and from scavenging on marine mammals. Chemicals concentrate as they move up the food chain. So animals at the top of the food chain tend to have the greatest amount of chemical burden in them, and so will experience the greatest impacts. So it just magnifies as you move up the food chain. Given the contamination, it was clear a new strategy was needed to hatch the eggs to reestablish the bald eagles. It just seemed like everything we did required something that hadn't been done before. The new plan required the team to take the natural eggs from the nest and replace them with dummy eggs, often using a helicopter to access the nests. Then they incubated the eggs until they hatched and took care of the newborn eaglets by hand. We basically didn't sleep. It's like having a little child. When they make a noise, your eyes just flick open. It's basically 24-7 surveillance. Once the eaglets had grown enough to travel, they transported them back to their original nest. It's called the dope on the rope, where you hang below a helicopter, go into the nest, switch out the eggs with fake eggs, incubate the eggs, and then foster chicks back in the same way. Oh, when you're flying off the edge of a 1,500-foot cliff, <laughs> 100 feet below a helicopter, that was pretty nerve-wracking for the first few times. Given the harm to the Southern California marine ecosystem, state and federal governments brought a lawsuit against the Montrose Chemical Corporation and other defendants. After 10 years of litigation, a record settlement was reached. The settlement was reached in 2000, and a year later, uh, the trustee council officially created the Montrose Settlements Restoration Program. And this program is designed to restore the injured resources uh, that were harmed by DDT. Using funds from the settlement, natural resource managers decided to focus their efforts on restoring the bald eagle to Santa Cruz Island. The thought was, why don't we try the Northern Channel Islands? They're farther away from the source of contamination. There's a greater diversity of prey species on the Northern Islands. The goal was to establish a self-sustaining population up there. Between 2002 and 2006, the team released 61 bald eagle juveniles onto Santa Cruz Island, transitioning them in temporary shelters or hack towers. They have two large cages on them that we put two to four eagles in, in each cage, and they have an observation area behind them that we're able to feed and observe the birds from. Once it looks like it's got strong wing beats, we can open the front door, and the birds can actually go out on a, a sort of a front porch and exercise more there before they take their first flight. After the eagles fled from the hack towers and mature, they'll eventually establish a territory, find a mate, and breed. We weren't sure if the environment was clean enough to support naturally nesting and reproducing bald eagles. In 2006, we got our answer. For the first time in over 50 years, a bald eagle chick successfully hatched naturally on Santa Cruz Island. Every day, you're just glued to what the report is from that morning on how the birds are doing. And finally, to hear back, there's a chick in the nest. It's hard to, uh, hard to say what that was like. Just, it's 28 years waiting to see that happen. It's incredible. That chick grew and fledged and is still alive and is flying around the Channel Islands.
Remote video cameras were installed to monitor the nests. And soon, thousands of viewers were able to see the eagles and their offspring via the internet. The life cycle of the eagles could now be followed remotely, from the laying of the eggs to their growth as juveniles and eventual fledging. Before fledging, the team places tags and transmitters on the eagles so that they can track their movements. Channel Island eagles have traveled as far north as Alaska and as far east as Yellowstone. We'll just get a lot of good information on their movements, primarily through the GPS transmitters, which will allow us to, to track them both on the island and on the mainland. So yeah, it's just using that coastline for now. She's also extended her range down to the Malvo Real area. There are now productive nests throughout the Channel Islands, including Catalina, where eagles are reproducing without human intervention. Every season is not gonna be a successful season, but as the population ages, we'll get more and more breeding pairs and therefore more chicks hatching, and the population should start growing exponentially. There was an opportunity for responding to this problem of DDT, and the reintroduction of bald eagles gave us that opportunity to use innovative restoration techniques. We now have breeding bald eagles back on the Channel Islands, and they're here to stay. Here we are in Southern California. People can go just 10, 15 miles offshore, and they can experience the symbol of wilderness, the bald eagle. This is our national symbol. We thought it was gonna wink out at one point. We can turn things around, and I think that's something we need to learn from the bald eagle. I think 20 years from now, we'll have eagles breeding on all eight of the Channel Islands. Thank you.